Formula One is back, and after just three days of testing, the preseason running at Bahrain is over. As much as everyone feared a repeat of 2020, thanks to the carryover of last year's cars, the immediate feeling from testing is that honestly, it's really hard to call where we think all the teams stand. But what we do know is how the teams have adapted to the new for 2021 floor regulations, which appear on first glance to have really shaken up the order. So what are the latest developments? We've picked out some of the most interesting new bits and pieces from Bahrain testing, starting with Mercedes' rippled floor. At the launch of the Mercedes W12, Mercedes took great pains to hide its brand new floor. Technical director James Allison mentioned that the team wasn't willing to unveil it and potentially hand its rival teams a chance to develop its own adaptation. Nonetheless, there's nothing to hide in testing, at least to some degree. Mercedes eventually had to concede its scalloped floor to the general public. Teams have been using scrolls in this area for years, helping to add a little extra downforce by increasing the possibility for airflow to expand underneath the car, particularly when the car is in yaw during cornering. But the division of the scroll into five distinct areas raises the question of why Mercedes has created the ripples in this design. It seems that, much in the same way that a diffuser uses internal fences to ensure it remains more effective, by reducing the chance for airflow to mix and create turbulence, breaking the scroll into smaller versions also produces this effect. There's also a square cutoff before the floor tapers in, which should introduce a tip vortex which can help to seal the floor. The bank of fins at the rear seems to be an aggressive attempt to turn airflow outwards, ensuring that the two fins further back towards the diffuser can attempt to place air between the diffuser and the rear tyre, and help to close it off in that manner. Now, Mercedes did struggle throughout the test, however, with the rear end looking a little less than predictable during the three days. It would be the ultimate hubris if the floor design Mercedes guarded so closely proved to be the defining factor in the W12's difficulties, and it's definitely something we need to keep an eye on. We're moving on to Red Bull's floor changes. Red Bull was distinctly secretive about its RB16B, but the tables seemed to have turned. Mercedes struggled throughout Bahrain with an unpredictable rear end, while Red Bull's car looked much more stable. The RB16B's floor was updated numerous times throughout the three days at Bahrain, eventually reaching a point where the car had a big collection of fins on the deck. The scroll is much less pronounced compared to Mercedes' design, but features a wealth of fins diverting airflow over the winglets along the floor's edge. These are paired with a much larger fin before the taper, which features a slight overhang which may again help to provide the floor with a vortex that can give it the opportunity to seal. Most notably, the RB16B has retained the high rake philosophy that Red Bull has worked with over the past few seasons. Early rumblings appear to suggest that the floor changes may play into the hands of the car running higher degrees of rake, but with just three days in the bank, it might be too early to say if that's definitively the case. Moving away from floors and onto McLaren's diffuser workaround. One of the other big changes for 2021 was the decision to trim the fences in the diffuser by 50mm to reduce its overall effectiveness. McLaren, however, found a way to embed the fences in the central part of the diffuser, dropping below the 50mm cutoff to find extra performance. It seems that by shallowing out the centre part of the diffuser, McLaren has found a space to fit those added fences in. The area that the fence height applies to is from 250mm either side of the centre line of the car, and so it seems that the design is very much legal. In fact, the other teams have reached that consensus too. But sticking to the rear of the car, let's take a look at Ferrari's serrated diffuser. As we mentioned earlier, channeling energised air between the rear tyre and the diffuser will create a barrier to reduce the tyre squirt entering the diffuser space and harming performance due to the turbulence within. With the reliance on floor slots now gone, the teams have had to find ways of making up that performance deficit produced by the increased vulnerability of the diffuser. Ferrari has found a way to try and mitigate that further, introducing an array of fins on top of the floor just ahead of the rear axle, the point at which the diffuser may open. These direct airflow slightly outwards which can guide it into that space next to the rear tyre and attempt to attack the turbulence produced by the tyre drifting inwards head on. This should help to preserve the rear-end downforce, and Ferrari had been seen testing the wake of its underbody flow with a very elaborate aero rake at the rear to help understand if the design was working as expected in the wind tunnel and in CFD. And last but not least, Alpha Tauri brought out its new suspension in the dust bowl over the weekend. So Alpha Tauri spent its tokens on its new nose, opting for a more tapered design without the thumb-tip crash structure used in recent seasons. 
although the team therefore could not use tokens to change the front of the chassis and introduce the entire Red Bull front suspension package using the double bulkhead arrangement to fit a continuous lower wishbone, it has taken the Red Bull concept from last season and adapted it for its own purposes. Alfa Tauri can buy in Red Bull's 2020 suspension without using any tokens, as it's an already homologated component, but it has to use it in a way here that it does not need to modify the chassis. The team has firstly modified the position of its steering arm, although steering geometry can be changed free of tokens, so long that it doesn't affect the inboard part of the suspension. So Alfa Tauri has made modifications to the outboard part of the front suspension, ditching the split upper wishbone for a more conventional conjoined version, but has seemingly followed Red Bull's lead in introducing the split lower wishbone, although it seems that the two legs connect within the wheel hub. It seemed to do the trick too, with newcomer Yuki Tsunoda getting to grips with the ATO2 very quickly, and producing an excellent lap time on the final day within a tenth of leader Max Verstappen. The ATO2 looks nice and easy to handle with no nasty surprises, and the squad backs the joint most laps throughout, hitting 422 along with Alfa Romeo. Although we expect the teams to assess their data from the Bahrain test and look at additional ways in which to improve at the season opening Grand Prix, they'll surely be casting sideways glances at the innovations that their rivals have brought. Will we end up with a full house of rippled floors come the end of the season, or will McLaren's diffuser fins become the first component to receive future copies? We can't wait to find out.